Street fights, bad blood, and pure hate. This fight buildup has seen it all. Ugly ass motherfucker, you know that. A long lasting feud has sparked one of the most intense rivalries YouTube boxing has ever seen. I'm gonna fuck you up so bad, I'm gonna break this man's face, and I promise you that. In an industry notorious for fabricating conflict, exchanges have sometimes been put into question. Got your hat. But this fight is real. If your bones are not broken by the time you leave the UK, yeah? A member of your team's bones are broken when you leave the UK? Do you hear what I'm saying? Styles make fights, but characters sell them. Like him or not, Ryan Taylor is certainly a character. Ryan's entry into YouTube boxing was inevitable and has given rise to one of the most explosive personalities in the industry. With so much talk online and both fighters looking to leave their mark, you could say this fight is all or nothing. I'm gonna be honest, living in Dubai is a lot different to training in the UK. There's a lot of people that come out here to enjoy the, you know, the sun, the beaches, the palm trees, the people, the vibes, and the respect that people have for each other out here is a lot different. The energy is a lot different, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot purer. So to be in Dubai, honestly, I'm, I'm blessed to be training out here and I'm blessed to be living out here as well. Here is a lot of professional fighters, a lot of people are coming from all over the globe. Just a few weeks ago, Anthony Joshua was out here with me and we was messing around and swimming in the ocean. The only thing that's different in this camp is the fact that since the last one, I've, like, I've took it serious now, I've not been partying, I've not been, you know, really living the way that I was living before. My coach, my training hasn't changed. I believe that for myself and for the future of the boxing, what I want to be doing now for the best coach, my bro Josh, He's actually a pro fighter himself as well with like over 14 years of Muay Thai experience. He's a beast. So I train with Joshua at the time and he's, he's one of my, he's like my little brother. He's got more than what it takes to take me to the next level. So Joshua will be with me for the, for the foreseeable future and until I'm, until I'm done with this whole YouTube boxing stuff. Like if I went in there now without any training, I know that I'd get caught by so many other shots where I was never tight. Punching but guard is still up and it's like moving around a lot more and movement and that but I've still got a lot to learn of course but definitely improving from what I've always been at the fight you know. At the start you had your hands like that so yeah. punching like this and yeah. yeah. After the first set of training, um, his mindset's changed massively because he's really realised that it's not about what you do in the gym that counts, it's also what's outside the gym. So his lifestyle's changed to, to suit to his fighting. So he, everything's focused on his boxing now, his whole life's changed. I'm Joshua Ridgewell, I'm a professional boxer, ex-professional Muay Thai fighter, and now a pro coach. Training with Ryan's easy. Um, obviously he's a professional athlete previously, so I haven't, haven't got to teach him coordination, this sort of stuff, so that, that makes it a lot easier to teach him. He's already af got athletic ability, so he's easy to teach. Anything I tell him, he does it, listens well, trains well, so it's not a bother. Ryan 
Ryan Taylor is no stranger to success. After building a multi-million pound empire in the BMX industry and a huge dedicated fan base, his notorious reputation has made him stand out from the crowd. Having been in the game for over a decade, his crazy stunts have at times landed him in hot water. Although Ryan has built one of the largest celebrity networks in the world, his character and outspoken nature isn't favored by everyone. Ryan Taylor is a dirtbag. Ryan Taylor is a wannabe thug. One of his most publicized conflicts is with the man known as the Hitman. The Hitman strikes again. With the 4-0 knockout record, Slim Albar's history with Ryan spans years. What started as a form of friendship has now developed into YouTube Boxing's most personal rivalry. Bro, oh, even if I bear back your mother, I wouldn't pull out that you fucking dumb. So this is quite funny because Slim was in one of my videos like, I think it was like five, six years ago. I actually just, I, I was cool in it. I was, I was building my YouTube. He was building his YouTube. He was just telling me about this guy, Adam Saleh, Adam, Adam this, Adam that. And I think at the time, I think he was just a big fan of Adam. And a lot of collabs happen with, with when you build an audience, you do a lot of videos of each other, you do a lot of collabs. And that's just part of building audiences. We've done one video together. And I think now with the YouTube boxing, he's had a couple of fights. The first fight that I seen of him was him and Fousey. And I remember putting it on Twitter or I put it somewhere and I was laughing at it, like as well as everybody else was. Everyone's was like, what have we just watched? Like, it was so funny. And I think since I reacted to that, he obviously then got the inkling that like, oh, me and him are not cool anymore. Because of course I've laughed about his performance and what he's done. So I think from there there's been a divide. He's obviously started doing his thing, I've, started, I've been doing my thing anyway. But, yeah, I don't care about him in it. And then now I guess it's come up where he needs an opponent. I think there's a big difference here in people, there's a big difference in character and I think your upbringing's got a lot to do with it as well. And I think it comes down to who's got heart. When you're getting smashed in the face by many punches, are you going to carry on or not? I don't think you are. Yeah, I feel like it's known that no one likes him, but he just, he thinks he's the fucking shit. And it's amazing to me that he's still so confident with it. Still good? The boys have come to film you. Me? Yeah, calling out Adam Saleh. <laughs> he don't want it. He does not want it, he couldn't have it. Doesn't. His, boyfriend, his, his boyfriend wants it though. I should be at the gym and sell him at the skate park. I should be resting, but instead I'm at the skate park. I gotta run my bike. My coach is there to show me how to run my bike as well. Hey, this is my guy Omar. What skate park was we at? Like two weeks ago? And you filmed the sickest clip in it. It's my bro. I'll be back in a bit, man. I'm gonna go right over here. There are many skate parks here right now in Dubai. There's like a couple like artistic, cool looking places. It's more made for like skateboarders and I would say bikes. But inshallah, I'm gonna make my own place. My own skate park here, I'm gonna build my own. It will be for training the kids, the local Emiratis. But there's no like, there's no local um, Olympic athlete in any Olympic sport in the, in the UAE. From what I'm aware of anyway, so. We'll make one. Ryan's upbringing could have led him down many different paths. However, after finding a passion in the BMX industry, this newfound purpose directed him towards a more promising future. Although Ryan's character could sometimes be perceived as controversial, one of the biggest things about Ryan is that he's actually largely misunderstood. So growing up in Warsaw, you know, there's not much opportunity for young kids to do, you know, there's the typical youth clubs, you know, parties in the park, whatever you're doing. But um, a skate park was getting built at the same time as like I was going through this period of, you know, 12, 13, 14 years of age, you're looking for opportunity, you're understanding what to do. A lot of the people around me was like robbing, stealing, fighting, getting into a lot of bad shit. I got so passionate for the BMX sport and it just allowed me to do what I wanted to do. You know, I went to the skate park and I felt free. I had an understanding of like learning a different trick as opposed to 
going to chew with other people and hang out and just do nothing and just doss around with them and just do fuck all, you know what I mean? So the skate park was a focus for me. The bike was a focus. The boys that I used to chill with, they ended up going to jail and getting into shit. I ended up like getting sponsored on my bike and going to competitions and getting into the sport that's BMX in it. So now it's a lot different, you know. Now I've, I've, I made my own path in, in the whole BMX thing and it's like BMX for me is a hobby. And you know, my bike company now, it's like I give the guys the opportunities that I didn't have when I was younger. And that, that for me is, the real meaning of freedom and the real freedom of wealth as well. It's like that's the understanding of having having freedom. So for me, giving them the opportunities that I didn't have, it works out a lot better and it motivates me a lot more to do what I'm doing. The passion that I've got for the boxing stuff now, it's like even before when I had a couple of weeks to train, for me when I was learning bits of footwork, movement, you know, sparring and training. I'm literally treating this how I found a skate park when I first started riding my bike. It's like, for me, learning new tricks back then, I was motivated to go home, sleep, get up the next day, go to the skate park. Now I'm motivated to go back to the gym, learn how to move a different way, watching videos on the internet, exploring like how other people are moving, how they're doing what they're, you know what I mean? So for me, I'm passionate now to learn that next trick, learn that next, punch, land that next maneuver, you know what I mean? So, I love it. Since his last fight, you can see how much more focused and how much more he wants to take this serious. Like normally me and Ryan are out partying every night. Like literally, no joke, like every night, just getting smashed, partying, coming home at like eight o'clock in the morning. And it feels like I've lost one of my drinking partners. My name is Charlie Sloth, People's Prince, best looking fat guy in the universe, biggest hip hop DJ in Europe, and Ryan's my little brother. I feel personally that Ryan could be bigger than Jake Paul. And that's what I've said to him. If you take this seriously, he's got that much charisma, that much character, and he's actually good as well. He can actually have a tear up. I think that's the problem with him before. I think everyone's always known Ryan can have a tear up, but a tear up and a boxing match are two totally different things. And I think now he finally understands that and understands that boxing itself is an art and you can see how much seriously he's taking it compared to the last fight. I think with this fight, it's a lot easier just because he's so cocky, man. Oh, it's just annoying. He it just is actually an irritating person. And when you see his face, he's got that face you want to just punch. Like you want to just hit him. Whatever knockout you see in that fight is going to be genuine. It's going to be real. It's proper. This is the real deal. In the world of boxing, fighters uphold an underlying level of respect. But sometimes, when a fight becomes this personal, all of that goes out the window. When it comes to fight night, I'm gonna release a whole different animal. I'm telling you guys, like this guy does not know what he's in. This motherfucker is a clickbaiting victim, skinny, ugly prick. I didn't fight Bro, back. If I fought back, I was, two, I was one man up. up I was if one I man up. Back, I was. You even knocked the fuck out, bro. I'm telling you. Bro, so. but this little five minutes of fame you got right now, get it all in, bro. Take it all in. <laughs> Take it all in, bro. <laughs> We are still going to fight in the ring, one on one, exactly what you want, and I'm gonna look you in the face and say, Slim, you're a bitch. Following one of the most heated buildups in YouTube boxing, the fans will finally have their questions answered. The time for talking is over. Blood will be drawn and scores will be settled. This can't be man. Slim's going to sleep. <laughs>